I have an interesting skill in that when I look at somebody and I look at their energy field, I can pretty much know within a few seconds uh, if they're living their life purpose, are they happy? And I can also notice in their energy fields what blocks or things are in the way. <laughs> He's going, look at me. <laughs> yeah, what blocks or things are in the way because they literally light up in my head like a little pinball machine. And, and the pattern or whatever block you have just like lights up and I see, ooh, that's got to go. And I can go into the energy and tell you what it is and where you got it and what age and who you bought it from. <laughs> So it's like an interesting uh, talent and skill. And what I noticed is that when I cleared these patterns from people, their lives would change. And how would I know that? They would call me up and they would go, holy crap, you're not going to believe what happened. <laughs> and so I get a lot of those, uh, those things. I've had multimillionaires come to me who've like lost their money, made their money, lost their money, made their money. And they come to me and they say, you know, I'm really tired of this pattern. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, usually it's like guilt or shame or making money from like these lower frequencies and you pull those out of somebody's system and then all of a sudden they can make the money and keep the money or the same thing with disease or love or any of those areas of your life and so so I'm gonna take you into my world a little bit and I'm gonna talk about energy <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how I see the world because if you look at the world the way I see it you will then be tapped into the causal plane where everything can be changed. Because everything that you're, you see in the outpicturing of your life really is the effect of your life. And everything that created it was created by all your thoughts, beliefs, ideologies, and every judgment you've ever um, bought or sold yourself you know, to or from somebody. And so those points of view make up your reality, and that's why your life is the way it is. Okay, so how many of you have ever been blocked <laughs> in making your dream happen? Anybody? <laughs> okay, cool. So we're gonna teach you how to get rid of that. All right. And I believe that if you change the frequency, like what thoughts and the things that you let come through your energy field every day, that's how you can change your reality. Now these energy, so I want you to just think, okay, so we're on a stage, there's a chair, there's your body, all right, it's made out of matter, right, and underneath the matter, it's made out of atoms and molecules and protons and neutrons and source energy that kind of permeates and holds everything together. And on this planet, there's a thing called polarity. <laughs> and that's where we live from this whole thing of light and dark, truth and falsehood, and even if you look at water, for instance, you know, you freeze it and it's a solid, uh, in the middle is a liquid, and then steam, right? So things can be transferred and changed. Negative polarity, we have electrons and neutrons, those have a negative charge, protons have a positive. So everything has a positive and a negative, and there's a source energy that holds it all together. So can you influence your environment? Well, there's an interesting, uh, how many of you have heard of Dr. Emoto, who talked about the hidden messages in water? Yeah, a lot of you, good. Okay, so Dr. Emoto, for those of you who don't know, he did an interesting experiment, and he took plain old tap water. And what he did was, he froze it, then he took it and he put it under a microscope, and he took a picture of uh, the molecules of water, and uh, when it was frozen, just plain tap water, the molecules looked something like this. So there's really no shape to it. There's no, um, you, know, uh, you know, no crystalline structure to it or anything like that. Then he took other bottles of water, and what he did was he uh, put different words on it. Like, so for instance, he did one that was love and thanks, and on this bottle of water with love and thanks, uh, he took a photo again after it was frozen, and the crystalline structure showed up, so there was a form to it. So he saw that with intention, he also prayed over the, the bottles, with intention, you can change your environment. He did another one that's really interesting, I hate you, you make me sick. <laughs> 
I, uh, there's a, there's a, I was watching this reality TV show one time, and this, this uh, chick kept saying, oh, that's so sick, and I'm, that's so sick, and I'm going, oh my God, what are you doing to your body? Your body's made up 70% water, right? So she's going, oh, that made me sick. I'm like, okay, <laughs> interesting projection. <laughs> then he did an energy of joy, that's joy. Joy is one of the higher frequencies that we can go. You fool. So how many, of, how many judgments do we do inside our own selves where we say, you know, we call ourselves little names in our head and we go, what are you thinking? You're so stupid, right? So that's the energy that you're putting in your body. Gratitude, gorgeous. Gratitude is an interesting energy. What I notice when people do gratitude statements and they're deeply appreciative and grateful for something, uh, literally a vortex of energy occurs around people. So this swirly, like, really cool space opens that allows for new stuff to come in. So gratitude's a really cool frequency to use. Dr. Bro, uh, he did also an experiment proving that we can uh, change, you know, and influence the environment around us. He took red blood cells, and uh, through intention, he proved that they could slow down the rate of blood cells dying. So, you know, you can affect it. Uh, there's also another interesting experiment by the Maharishi. It's called the Maharishi Effect. And in the Maharishi Effect, he took uh, like 7,000 uh, meditative uh, yogi monks and he threw them in different cities. And they measured what happened in those cities before and after through a variety of ways. In one city, the crime rate actually dropped 22%. In uh, other cities, they monitored that the pollution dropped. In uh, Tel Aviv, the stock market went up. So this is basically putting conscious beings in a place, pulling in source energy, radiating it out in a space to change the environment. Okay. Then when I was working on people, I noticed that some people would change really rapidly and some people not so much. And so I came across a book called Power Versus Force, and it had this beautiful little scale in it. And uh, what I noticed in the scale is that it, he was basically putting in a little scale what I was seeing in my practice, why some people would change and some people wouldn't. So when I was looking at people and I was like pulling out these patterns, some people obviously had more patterns than others. And uh, if somebody had guilt and shame, they were usually the harder patterns to uh, pull out. And here's why, they're actually the lowest frequency. So the energy of shame basically means I am not enough. So if you notice that when we're going through, um, if you kind of track all your beliefs, like you think I can't make money, and you go all the way down it, or I can't have love, and you go all the way down it, basically it hits this little funny place that says I am not enough. Like you think you're not powerful enough, right? So that's, that's shame. Uh, guilt is the energy of 30. Uh, he measured uh, Hitler on the scale. Hitler's energy was like 37, okay? So he actually did feel a little guilty somewhere about what he was doing. <laughs> uh, then there's the energy of apathy, which is where a lot of homeless people will live because they just sort of give up and they don't care so much. Uh, the energy of grief, uh, where you're just totally sad and uh, your whole energy field, like if, if you have grief over money, that would be like, you know, you feel like a victim, that you really can't, you know, how come I can't get any money? You're just sad about it. Fear, uh, maybe if I make too much money, uh, people will want to take it away from me, like there's a little bit of a paranoia with those kind of beliefs or structures. Uh, desire, now this, this energy of desire is not the true desire to have like a goal or a better life, this energy desire is more about like the addictive quality of, um, you know, I desire something from an egoic place of if I don't have, like I need it to build me up because I don't actually feel like I am enough, right? So it's a different kind of desire. Anger, now anger is an interesting one because it, at least it's a moving energy. Now if somebody gets mad in front of me, I'm kind of happy, you know, I don't know why? Because <laughs> at least I know they're, pissed off enough to actually do something with the energy, okay? So anger will move you. Pride, pride is usually uh, where a lot of fundamentalism live because you're, you're prideful because of these ingrained beliefs that you have and they might not necessarily be your own. 
Uh, courage is level 200. And courage is basically a door opener. He found in his research uh, that basically, like, an, if enlightened master is 1,000, right, and love is 500, one person at 500 can positively change the frequency of those at 200, lift 750,000 other people, okay? If one person at the vibration of 600 can affect 10 million people, one person at the vibration 700, enlightened, can positively impact 70 million people. So that's why I was excited about this, because basically it shows that you can change your environment. You being more you can actually really influence the world or change the world. And so you moved up courage to neutrality. Uh, and by the way, the reason I stopped on courage is because Right now, the planet's like only, the average of all human beings on the planet is only a little bit over 200, okay? So that's not very high. Now, obviously, some countries are higher than others, right? If they're practicing, uh, like, you know, the, uh, America and things like that, or in between the four and five hundreds is the average. Um, so we have willingness, where you're actually willing to do something. Acceptance, where you accept responsibility for a bigger part of your life. Uh, reasoning between 400 and 500 is where the scientists uh, live. Einstein measured at 499 because he didn't necessarily believe uh, quite in love. He was doing like mathematical reasoning kind of energy. The energy of love, which is why I call my product Lover Above, is again, the, pr the premise is basically you can change 750,000 other people by you vibrating the energy of love. And so uh, healing, Healing energy happens at joy. You want to heal something in your life? Go play. <laughs> then there's peace, 600 and above, and enlightenment. So it's a logarithmic scale. And basically, I'm just showing you that all of the beliefs and structures that you have in your being emanate or vibrate at one of these levels. And if you pay attention consciously to what's going on inside you, what are you thinking, you can actually change your world. OK, so I found that. Uh, these levels can affect any part of your life. Like yesterday, we learned about the 12 areas. I just put up five areas, love, wealth, relationships, career, and health. And you can have different vibrations for each level of your life. So you could be kind of stuck on money, but you could actually be really good at, you know, love and relationships. And so uh, there's an overall, like, pattern in your life. And then there's sometimes, like, little ancillary places where you're going to have to look at what your judgments and beliefs are. So your judgments, and what I'm going to define judgments to be, is basically all your conclusions that you bought and sold yourself at some level, and these are the things that are blocking you from reaching the higher frequencies. So when I ask the question to myself, how do I raise my frequency like the quickest, the fastest, because <laughs> I wanted to know exactly what these higher vibrations were, the message that I received is actually quit judging everything. Don't judge everything. And now that sounds like a simple little thing. Don't judge everything. What does that mean? <laughs> well, if you have, for instance, a conclusion of what if, uh, like I'm, I'm a girl, I'm a female, I'm a woman. So if I have a judgment on what a female is supposed to be in the society, then that judgment could actually limit that which I pull into my reality, right? So one judgment, I am female, it seems pretty simple, <laughs> could have behind it a hundred other little things, subsets of beliefs, right, that basically can block me from, you know, if I had, if I'm female, but behind that is I'm female, therefore I don't make as much money as a man, therefore, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the other beliefs are, all those things would actually limit what I actually go do in my life. So what I was noticing with clients is, is if they came to me and they said, I have a block on money, uh, what I would have to do is I'd have to go in and just go, where did that first start? And sometimes it would start when they're two years old and they heard their mom and dad, you know, literally fighting about money, right? Or, or um, the, the father said something cruel to the, to the kid of, oh, you can't have that, right? How many times do we tell our children, we can't have that, we can't afford that, no, we can't have that, or no, 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 no. 
all those things actually start to build up and limit our ability to reach for something new. And that's, how, that's pretty much what everybody's problem is, is your problem is <laughs> you have all these stuck things that are subconsciously like hanging out and you go to like make a choice in your world and these things kind of kick in and that's where you say, well, I started to manifest something and it didn't happen. <laughs> well, that's because your soul loves you enough that it's gonna basically bring up all your crap so that you can see it, and if you just keep going for it, eventually all those judgments will go away. So, so you, yeah. So how do you get these judgments? I'm kind of skipping ahead. <laughs> so how do you get these judgments and conclusions from others? By aligning, agreeing, resisting, and reacting to them and to the environment around you. So I've had many people come to me and they want to know the spiritual reason for why they have a certain disease in their life, right? And the spiritual reason could be, uh, like I had one client, she came to me and she had breast cancer, right? And so when I tapped into the reason why she did it, her mom had it and she basically decided that is never going to happen to me. Now that seems like a really innocent conclusion, right? That is never going to happen to me. But the problem is, is she used that judgment with fear attached to it, right? So she was a fear. So she pulled that energy of fear in, and it's sort of like, don't think of a pink elephant. <laughs> so whatever you're thinking of attached to the fear came into her reality, and then that's what manifested. And you pull these judgments out, generally speaking, the body can then learn how to heal itself. Because if you think, just go back to the whole premise, you're 70% water, right? If you can affect the water molecules, couldn't you also, by your thoughts, just affect other parts of your body. Because. So if you want to track what your judgments are, it's very simple. If you say, I can't do this because <laughs> all the things that you spit out like right after the because are generally all your justifications, beliefs, and things. And if you just consciously pay attention to them for two seconds, and I'm going to show you how to clear them, uh, that's your clue for what's actually blocking you. I had a client who came to me, and I'd ask her a question, and I would say to her, um, what do you think about X, Y, Z, whatever it was? And the first thing that came out of her mouth every time I asked her a question was, I don't know, right? And, she'd, and then she'd, she'd say the answer after, I don't know. I'd say, what color do you like? And she'd say, I don't know, blue. And I'd say, well... Uh, what do you want to manifest? Well, I don't know. Da, 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 da. And I'm thinking, wow, she doesn't even really get that the language that she's speaking right now is project. And then she was also complaining that she wasn't intuitive enough. <laughs> but, she, <laughs> but she couldn't see her own little pattern of um, you know, saying, I don't know, after every time somebody asked her a question. So that where did the I don't know come from? Well, I basically traced it back. And it came from always having to justify to her parents why she was doing something. Like her parents would ask her, uh, why do you want to, or, you know, she'd say, I want to go buy that dress or whatever. And they'd say, well, why do you want to go buy that dress? And then she'd have to come up with a zillion reasons of why she had to go buy that dress. And then finally, at some point, she just caved in to this whole weird reality that she's living with her parents. And she just said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and if she said, I don't know first, and then gave the reason, she could pretty much justify her whole, her whole life. But the I don't know was blocking her from her intuition, from her own knowing, right? So I'm bringing that up so that you start paying a little more conscious attention to what it is that your natural habits are when you're speaking or, uh, you know, what, what other judgments that you're thinking. Now, here's what's happening. So if somebody says, like, remember how I kind of said that these judgments have layers? So if somebody comes to me and they say, uh, you know, I can't make money, I'm always broke, right? So what I'll energetically hear, they'll say, I'm always broke. I can actually feel like a deadness in their energy field when they say, I'm not broke, or I'm always broke. And there's like a certain quality of frequency in there. And what happens is, is your, your soul is not just in your body, right? It emanates out, you know? And uh, 
so I, what I would see is these pattern overlays of I'm not broke, and they just light up everywhere. And so basically, when we cleared these and put in source energy, then I am, you know, basically her frequency would run just really clear and like a light. And then that person could go, therefore, go manifest what it is they desired. So if you cannot change your environment, you either haven't chosen to change it or you haven't cleared the judgments blocking you. As an infinite being, you only have two things. You have choice and you have awareness. You're a perceiving, knowing being who is in a body. So you can either choose things or you can be aware. And choice will always overrule. Remember how last night, he, or for those of you who are here, he said, I chose happiness? Okay? You choose something really powerfully, then everything will come up that's in the way of that, and then you just clear it. And that's really all you have to do to, you know, be happy. So if you want to change your life, you have to change your matter. Now, a lot of us have been fed a lot of bullshit, <laughs> basically, about what's true or false. So we might think that I can't make money, or we might think I can't have love, or we might think I'm broke. You know, a lot of people say I'm broke. And it's very fascinating because that one belief I am broke can basically permeate all other parts of your life and break other parts of your life, right? So you have to clear all the untruths and falsehoods, which means you have to question your judgment. So if you're saying something and you say to yourself, oh, I can't do that, be willing to be consciously aware enough to say, well, is that true? Is that really true that I can't do that? And just be a little more, pay attention a little bit more. And clear the judgments bound with lower energy. So are you lover abubbing things into your life? Or are you judging things out of your life? So remember the client I was talking about who said, I don't know all the time? I thought the only way I'm going to get her to be, be willing to like, pay attention to enough is I have to give her something to do. And so what I did is uh, they have some postcards that they can hand out for you. But I had her take a little index card and carry it around with her for a week. Okay? And I would encourage you to do this. And basically all I did is I told her that the only thing you have to do is every time you judge something out of your reality, you basically say, I can't do it, I couldn't do it, I don't know. Uh, or you're looking at somebody and uh, without appreciation and you're saying, oh, I can't believe they're wearing that, that sucks, or whatever these judgments are that we have, right? You just make a little mark of what your judgments are. And then after you make the judgment, I'm going to show you that basically what you're going to do is, is you're going to clear, if you want to write down what your judgments are, you can later on clear them. And so some of the judgments I have, because I've worked on so many people, I actually have lists of thousands <laughs> of what these beliefs are that I found on people. They're really, really fascinating. But some of the ones that we've heard, these lies, the love of money is evil, money doesn't grow in trees, I don't have enough, rich people cheat, lie, or steal, I found that on people. I've also found I have to work hard for my money. When I cleared my own belief of I had to work hard for money, I got a check in the mail for six figures. <laughs> because I put in a new belief, which basically said I get paid for being me. Okay? Just me. I get to show up and be me. <laughs> There's some other ones. Money is not spiritual. Spiritual people don't have any money. I have to stay for a rainy day. I'm broke. I'm not good with money, and I can't afford whatever. If, if I have a client who comes to me and they say, I can't, I can't, da 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 da, <laughs> I ask them for a few days to go around saying, what would it take for me to be able to afford that? Okay? My favorite little saying is, what would it take? And the universe responds to that. What would it take for this to happen? What possibility could I open up in my life? What would it take? Okay, and you don't have to know how, but if you ask what would it take, you just created an opening for the universe to support uh, what it is you desire. So the ways you can change your wealth programming, you can make a choice. You can bless things and be grateful that it's already in your life. So basically, when I had her do the whole make a list of her judgments, every judgment she made, she had to reframe it. And she, had, she said, uh, I'm broke, OK? She'd have to reframe it and say, I am so grateful and thankful. And I love how much money I have in my life. 
And that simple reprogramming over and over and over again of I'm so grateful and thankful and happy that I have this in my life, pretty much when she came to me, she didn't have any, uh, she didn't have a job, and then she basically opened up her whole life and got a job within two months, and she hadn't had a job in a year. Just, just from, just from do, clearing your judgments and adding gratitude. Connect to the oneness and source energy. So remember the scale of zero to a thousand. And then there's the energy that holds everything in. So do you want to learn how to connect to source energy the way, uh, the way I do it? <laughs> okay. So you're an infinite being in a body. So just close your eyes for a minute. Okay. And I just want you to take, take your energy and expand it out past the seatmate next to you and expand it out past the room and expand it out past this building and expand it out past this hotel and expand it out past Costa Rica and expand it out past Mexico and expand it out past the planet and expand it out past moon, expand it out past Jupiter, expand it out past Pluto, expand it out until you connect to the light. Just keep going and going and going until you somewhere feel a certain peacefulness kind of resonate in your body. In this space is where you can reprogram anything. So in this space, just think of something that you're grateful and thankful for that you want to show up in your life. Maybe something on your list yesterday for the money. I'm so grateful and thankful that this showed up in my life. And I'm so grateful and thankful this shows up in my life now. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I have all my needs fulfilled. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I experience joy in this moment. And I'm so grateful and thankful that all the answers I wanted answered before I showed up here are answered. They just show up and they come to me. And I'm so grateful and thankful for me being me. And I'm so grateful and thankful yeah, for all the good that's coming into my life. All right, so when you're ready, you can just open your eyes. Okay. So if you noticed, when you go out to that space, you can keep connecting and connecting and connecting. That's because you're an infinite being who can perceive and know anything, right? You don't really have an edge or an end to you, right? You can just keep going and going and going and going. And from that space of oneness, which is basically oneness, you can delete and change any program. So if I make a judgment that I am broke, let's just say, I can go into that space and just say I delete that and I add that which I want. The five choices you can make to change your future. Every future ambition has to be changed at source and clear all judgments and beliefs. Be love, be joy, and play more, right? Joy is the calibration of 600. Play more. Be extraordinary in every thought, word, and deed. Just be a little more conscious of what's going on. Love her above and align and agree with that which you want. When I was raising my vibration really quickly, I basically would not allow any thought in my head of that which I didn't want. So for, to keep my focus, I just wanted to see, I, I'll do anything like really, you know, uh, to the nth degree just to see if it works. <laughs> and uh, I would basically do a little walking mantra or prayer, I'm just so grateful and thankful, of, and I blessed everything that I wanted to have show up in my life. And pretty much everything that I asked for in that short time period, like pretty much came within a week or two. So it was really fast and ask questions and follow information from source guidance. When you connect to that oneness place, you can ask any question 
and it'll show up. Now, some people might say, well, I don't hear the answer like right away. Well, just come from a space of the universe loves you enough that it'll actually show you the answer in some way. So maybe you might get it from a person or a TV show or some other way. You don't know how it's going to show up, but just ask for whatever it is that you need uh, to show up from that space of oneness. Okay, okay. So I want to say that I'm so grateful and thankful that you guys are here. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. And I would love to hear some uh, little stories of, of, uh, from people about uh, how many judgments you found and how many you cleared and added love to. <laughs> All right, thank you.